crafty friends, welcome to episode 10 of the Stella Blues and Knits video cast. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you're a new viewer, thank you so much for stopping by and for giving my podcast a chance and for spending a little bit of your crafty time with me. Um, this is a video podcast primarily about knitting and sometimes some other craftsy bits. If you want to get in touch with me, I am Salapalooza on Ravelry. I am Salapalooza Knits on Instagram and that is absolutely where I am most active. And my email is salapaloosanits at gmail.com. So feel free to pop me an email if you have any questions or inquiries or anything like that. I would love to hear from you. Now, before we move on, there are a little bit more administration this week because the Salopalooza Knits Ravelry group is finally up and active. And um, yes, do pop over to Ravelry and enter Salopalooza Knits or Salopalooza Knits podcast in the groups tab and make sure you join because we'll, we'll have some fun uh, activities going on and I promised some giveaways in um, in some well I don't really know exactly what time but uh, when there's a few more people in there I'm sure we'll figure something out so that's definitely the place to be if you want to participate in all of the nitty fun yes so what else? My name is Elizabeth and I'm coming to you from the beautiful city of Bergen which is in the western part of Norway and this is where I live with my wonderful boyfriend and where I study psychology at the university here. Uh, I also work in a psychiatric hospital and um, yes. Anything else you want to know just pop me an email or send me a message or ask me in the rubbery thread whatever you want yes okay that's that i'm just gonna have a sip of tea before we get into it i i just i just want to show you sorry something fell down something real quick this little tea infuser here i thought it was so f incredibly charming and whimsical and fun it's a little flower um, and the infuser part is on the bottom and it just sort of floats around in your mug. Can you see that? Um, and I just uh, got it from Ikea a couple of days ago. I just had to run in and get uh, get something real quick and I passed these and I just had to get some and you can't really go to Ikea just to pick up one thing. Um, it's pretty much inevitable that you go out with loads of bags and uh, maybe a new living room set. Who knows? But it's the curse of Ikea. Um, and anyways, they were super, super cheap. I got a pink one and a yellow one for like two pounds or something like that. Uh, so um, I love drinking tea and I couldn't leave them. Enough about that. Uh, the tea is Kusmi tea. It's the green tea with the rose. It's really really good and they come in these gorgeous little tins. Um, they have bigger ones as well but I just love these little ones because you can bring them with you and they are so handy and uh, they are perfect for little stitch markers and keeping notions later on so I had to get it obviously. It works on so many levels. <laughs> enough about that. Uh, get your knitting and something in your cup and let's just jump into it. First of all, um, let me just start off with thanking a couple of people because um, I have been getting some serious love and support on social media in the last week and I'm just so grateful and it truly means it just it means so much to me and it makes me so happy and so basically thank you so much to Christy who is the dyer behind 
uh, Caf Yarn Cafe Creations, sorry, Yarn Cafe Creations, and Tristan, who is the dyer behind Dragon Hold Yarns, for their love and support uh, that they have been showing me over the last week. Um, they also have the very inspiring and super fun and smart and witty and charming podcast, The Girls in the Yarn Cafe. Um, you should absolutely check that out. They are both spectacular knitters and designers and their yarn is gorgeous. So yeah, their podcast is wonderful as well. So definitely go check them out. And Tristan actually gifted me her latest pattern and it's called the Brioche Pussycat Hat. I will make sure to pop in a picture here. And it is just so beautiful and fun and whimsical and playful and um, I mean it's it's stunning naturally me being both a knitter and you know a human being I loved it and she wants to donate a pattern um, or the pattern to you guys as well so how much fun is that I'm so excited and thank you so much Tristan that is just incredibly generous and oh, I just I'm so overwhelmed I don't even know what to say but make sure you go and check out their podcast and their yarn shops because they truly have some amazing yarn in in there um yes and go check out the solar pollution it's Ravelry group for a chance to win Tristan's lovely pattern the pussycat sorry the brioche pussycat hat getting all tongue tied already I guess roast tea isn't the way to go I guess I needed something stronger this is green tea so it's naturally caffeine free maybe that's the problem podcast days seems like good days for heaps and loads of caffeine anyways it's good though it keeps my throat comfortable and it tastes really good yes anyways um I haven't really figured out the details about uh, the the pattern um, how I'm going to do it if you're going to if we're going to do it as a prize for a maybe a knit along or something like that or if I'm just going to do it as a giveaway um, I haven't figured out the detail yet but we'll get there and make sure you stop by the solar blues and its railway group and um, that will keep you posted so that's that's the first big love I wanted to send out and I also wanted to send uh, some love to the lovely Meg who is um, Bad, Wolf, Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits uh, for giving me a shout out on her lovely podcast Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits and um, she's also the dyer behind Bad Wolf Girl Studios and she is having a trunk show on February 24th first at the yarn club in virginia so make sure you go there and support all the makers um if you're in the neighborhood or if you're not in the neighborhood um this might be a good time to plan a road trip i guess uh, because there's lovely knitters waiting for you when you get there and we all know that knitting humans are the best kinds of humans so that's that and there's going to be heaps of amazing yarn so go there and support Meg and the other makers and buy some yarn and check out her wonderful podcast Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits. Um, little side note she is actually also a pretty good singer and ukulele player so what's not to love go check it out. <laughs> All right that's that's the shout outs and the uh, love I wanted to send out to the world starting off with this episode and um, let's jump into the knitting shall we um, there's an elephant in the room uh, I'm wearing it it's green and fluffy and it's called the Snurskanigamsar it is the test knit that I've been working on and it's finished and I love it and I'm just going to stand up for a sec and do that awkward little um, look at what I'm wearing pose 
so this is the damper. It is uh, knit out of two strands of yarn that I will talk about in a moment. Um, but let's just look at it first. We got satin sleeves and most of it is stockinette. It's rather cropped and it's got this very broad um, part of ribbing at the bottom, which you can also slee, see, slee on the sleeves. <laughs> you can also see on the sleeves here. We've got a little, um, sorry, I'm waving my microphone thingy there. <laughs> we got this, um, uh, sorry, pattern piece on the sleeve here. And we've also got this gorgeous lace pattern going down from the shoulders. And the back is just plain stockinette. And um, yes, I guess that's that. I'll be wearing it. So feel free to <laughs> look at it throughout the episode. But it feels a little awkward standing up. So I'm going to sit down. Uh, anyways, the yarn is Lilla Lachke. And it is from Dolly Girl, which is a Norwegian yarn company. And the other one is... Um, Dreamline, Dreamline Air, yes, Dreamline Air from the Store Alpaca or GSA, which is also a Norwegian neon company. Um, the Lachka yarn is co Egyptian cotton and wool, and it's merino, I think. And yes, it's definitely merino. <laughs> and the other one, um, the other yarn is a strand of um, a brushed alpaca yarn, brushed Syria alpaca. And um, I just love the way they look together. The, the fluffy one is very bright green and the other one is a pale sort of yellow. And I had a gut feeling that they would just really work well together and I'm so glad that I chose to go with that because I really do really do like the way it turns out. Uh, if you want to see the, the skeins before I use them all, you can do that in my previous episode. Um, yes, I knit them on Knit Pro Cubics uh, and on Cubics Novas and on the Likia Interchangeable Needles. Um, it, yes, I had some changes, changes throughout the knit and I'm glad I did because I really felt that the um, uh, the square needles, the Knit Pro Cubics and the Cubics Novas, they work really well with uh, ribbing, especially when you're dealing with several strands of yarn and especially, especially, as one of them is quite fluffy. Uh, it provides very smooth stitch definition so I used that for, for the um, both of the sleeves and for the ribbing and then I got my interchangeable Lycka set which you can watch me when I about in the previous my previous episode uh, so I decided to use that for the main part of the jumper and I love knitting with those needles and uh, it just I'm very pleased with how it turned out um, the pattern is very well written and um, I'm so glad I got to test it um, I even I almost feel like I want to knit another one it's sort of vintage inspired and I really like that look um, what else it's quite cropped so I think if I knit another one I would probably elongate it a little bit just because I have quite a few cropped sweaters crop knit sweaters now and um, I do find the longer ones to be even more uh, wearable for me and for my wardrobe um, so I might do that but I finished this about maybe a little week ago and I've been wearing it heaps and loads so um, I'm very very pleased with it. Now the pattern itself has not been released yet, but I know that it is just around the corner. Like I said, it's called the Snurstianigenser. It is a design by Anna Nitz 
on Instagram and um, I will make sure to let you know when the pattern is uh, released if you are interested in knitting it as well. All right, so that's that's this. Moving on. Um, <laughs> living in my little fox, sleeping fox bag by Busy Pottering. Um, I, I showed you this last week. It's a little baby cardi. Um, the yarn I'm using is Larka by Darlingarn. It's also a Norwegian yarn. It's the plumper version of the yarn that I knit this sweater out of. And um, it's knit in this beautiful mauve colour. Um, oh, sorry, I just plunged the yarn into the microphone. Hopefully that didn't hurt your ears too badly. If it did, I'm terribly sorry. Um, yes, anyways, I have done some knitting on this the last week. Um, it's quite, it knits up fairly quickly. Uh, I have, I'm knitting a rather small size. I think it's the six month, six month size. So it's not so bad. It's a little weird showing it off because it's knit from the, from the top down and I just, um, the sleeves are all hanging there, but <laughs> we'll give it a go. Sorry if it looks weird. I'm going to try to show it off as good as I can. Here we go. This is called Bringebarjakken or the Raspberry Jacket. It is a pattern by Hoppestrik, which is a Norwegian pattern designer. And it's a top down cardi with a raglan increase. And you've got this very charming pattern going um, across on the shoulders and also down here in the waist. So uh, I've done quite a bit of work on it. What's left is obviously the sleeves, uh, which I've separated here. And uh, from here, it's basically just stocking out downwards and then some ribbing at the bottom. Um, so it should knit up fairly quickly. Uh, I have not picked the buttons for this yet, but I'm thinking that uh, some wooden buttons might be the way to go. I talked rather extensively about this, uh, about this whip last week, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time doing it. Um, I also talked a bit about the pattern not being particularly clean and tidy, and um, yes, I mean being a stickler for sort of clean and tidy patterns that uh, annoys me a little bit, I must admit. But um, I think that the finished object is going to look really well. So I'm going to see it through. And um, I mean, it's not, it's not really bad. It's just that you do need to read it a couple of times, probably. Um, I did anyways. Um, I had to read through it a couple of times before it sort of started to make sense. And that is obviously time that I could have spent knitting. So. I'd rather have knitted uh, than read the pattern over and over again. But I think it's going to look great when it's finished. Um, on here is my little glow in the dark vampire by Jiggles and Beans. I love him so much. I think that I should probably name him or something. Um, if you have any suggestions, do let me know. <laughs> um, yes, I think he's so charming and adorable. I love it. I think that's it for that one. I'm just gonna leave it there. Uh, the raspberry jacket, it's by Hobbit Speak. All right, next one I have. It's not really a half finished object because I haven't put in the heel yet, but it is a sock and I'm doing an afterthought heel. So um, let's, you know what, let's just call it half finished, shall we? <laughs> Um, and here it is. I started it last Sunday. It's Sunday today, by the way. It's Sunday the 11th. And the pattern is the Monkey Socks. Uh, it's a pattern by the wonderful Cookie A. 
I love the monkey sock pattern. I have knit a pair out of uh, this pattern before and I'm so pleased with it. I use, I wear the, the monkey socks that I previously knit and I wear them all the time. So I wanted to knit another one and I do find the pattern to be incredibly enjoyable. Um, this one is living on my would you go, um, there we go, would you go sock blockers. Um, they are really good by the way. And I knitted on a red yarn. yarn. It's the um, uh, red in the perfect series, the red yarn perfect socks, so that you get a ball of yarn and um, it's starting and ending with a yellow thread. So when you cut that and start the yarn, you'll start the both of the socks on the same um, on the same place, so that you'll have two identical socks, and that's really nice. And this is obviously a gradient, let me just pick up the ball here, it's a gradient uh, ball of yarn, it's, I think that this is the vintage colour, I'm sorry I forgot to check, double check it, but I think it's the vintage colour, I will put it in the down bar. <sighs> no wait, I won't, I'll put the show notes in the Ravelry group, mm -hmm. but I will link to the show notes and the Ravelry group in the down bar. <laughs> So yes, really, really enjoyable pattern. Um, I knit these out of a 48 stitch count um, and on two millimeter uh, needles, I use the higher, higher sharps. Um, on, after the cuff, I split so that, um, well, I, I split them into, let's take it off to show you, into two thirds. Uh, for the top uh, part of the foot, sorry, my my mind is working faster than my mouth, and um, for one third of the stitches for the bottom of the sock. Now that is obviously a little bit too few mm, stitches. It was, let's see, 48, 16 stitches uh, on the back. Um, yeah, 16 stitches on the back. So I did a couple of increases to get, um, I think, eight more stitches on the bottom um, for the base or the the bottom <laughs> underneath your foot. Sorry. Um, and I'm very pleased with how they turned out. Um, so I'm going to put in an afterthought heel um, and yeah, that's that. I really love how the gradient yarn works with this pattern. I think that it looks really good and the yarn was super enjoyable to work with. It felt a little bit coarse when I first got it and I wasn't too sure about it, but now that I have worked with it, I'm so pleased and I definitely want to use this yarn again. And I can't wait to use, uh, to cast on the other, the other sock and um, start working on it. But something got in my way because I decided to cast on another pair of socks yesterday instead of casting on the second sock of the monkey socks. It happens. I have chronic startitis and I just somehow can't seem to help myself. So, without a project bag, because I cast them on yesterday, and they have been living on the the living room table. <laughs> I started knitting on the Naughty and Nice socks, which is a design by Brandy Velt or Veltzi. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. Sorry about that if I butchered your name, Brandy. But she is um, um, Brandy of uh, Long Dog Yarns. So. Uh, it's a really lovely pattern. She published it, I think, one or two days ago, yesterday, or maybe it was on Friday. And it just popped into my Ravelry as a as a um, suggestion for me. Um, and I got it right away. I thought that it looked a lot of fun to knit and I'm always looking for a new good sock pattern. So um, it's also discounted. Uh, I think until the 14th 
on Ravelry so if you're interested do go check it out now because you might get a good deal on on the pattern anyways I'm going to show you real quick <clears throat> these are the naughty and nice socks um, I do love a good name on a pattern or a yarn so that really spoke to me um, it's as you can see, I did the um, the ribbing on top of the cuff and I've just been working my way down. Uh, the pattern is written for a 72 stitch count, but I um, adapted it to be a 48 stitch count because um, my feet are on the smaller side and also because I do like my socks to be quite uh, tightly hugging my feet. Um, yes, so it's a 48 stitch count. I'm knitting these on a 2.5 millimeter needle. These are the Knit Pro, um, what they call carbons, uh, or Knitters Pride if you are in the US or Canada. And I really enjoy working on the carbons. I think they are very uh, quick and lightweight and uh, comfortable to work with. Um, the I'm thinking that the cable is maybe a little bit too stiff for my taste, um, but it it um, is not really that bad. Yes, yeah, so that's that. Um, on here is also this adorable little giraffe stitch marker that I'm just going to get up and show you for a sec. Uh, the light turned a little weird there because he is incredibly cute. Um, I will link to the maker in the show notes. <sighs> yes, so he's keeping me company on those socks and making the progress uh, speed rather good, if I may say so. I did cross this on late last night and uh, yes, so I knit this yesterday and I'm at the point where I'm thinking that I will put um, in the heel um, or I might continue with the pattern and do an afterthought heel. The pattern is written for a German short row heel um, which I'm, I'm sort of, it's not my favourite heel but it does, you know, it does the job so <laughs> maybe I ought to uh, change it up a bit and, um, and go with the German short row heel. I'll have to think about it but that's that's next. The yarn is this beautiful ball right here. It is a yarn by a company that I have talked a little bit about earlier. I think in my first episode I talked quite extensively about that company um, but it's called Gansuch and this particular name uh, is Sorry, let me just see quickly if I have the ball band to show you because I did think that I bought it but maybe I didn't bring it. Oh yes, I did. Here it is. This is the logo. Gornsur. And their website is gornsur.no And uh, the colourway name is called Echtla. Uh, or me he far. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that means but it's probably come to think of it I wonder if it's um, if it means blushing I'm not quite sure they all of their colorway names are these um, really interesting uh, very old and specific uh, geographically specific dialect words in Norway and um, it's nowhere near where I live so and or where I'm from so I've never heard most of them before but so that's the first name I'm guessing that's Urkla and the other one Mihifar it's um, another language it's um, uh, let's see I can look it up real quickly but um, the point is that Gansur the yarn is uh, hand dyed by refugee women in Norway and uh, it's sort of a social integration company and 
I think that that is really wonderful. So uh, you should go check it out. Okay, I have the page here. It means embarrassed. Uh, so yeah, it means embarrassed in the very small part of Norway where this um, dialect is from. And mihifar also means embarrassed, but in a language called Tigrinja. Um, it's designed by Akbaret, who is from Eritrea. So perhaps that's an Eritrean language, I'm not sure. Anyways, I'm really happy with the yarn. I think that Gansu has wonderful yarns and I really enjoy the, the thoughts behind the company. I think that's wonderful. Um, this is a 100 gram ball. It's superwash merino nylon, 7525. Um, yes, I guess that's that. Um, I'm really enjoying the pattern. I think it knits up really quickly. I love the uh, interest of the knot pattern. And I'm loving the way it's looking, uh, the yarn is looking with this pattern. So yes, I'm totally rambling here. Sorry about that. Okay, I think that's actually it for the knitting this week. Um, I have some acquisitions as well that I want to show you. Yes, I do have some yarn. I always joke with my boyfriend about yarn being my catnip. Uh, but it's not really a joke at all. It absolutely is. Uh, <laughs> so first of all, I want to show you something that I'm so excited about. Um, I finally got my very first skeins of Knitfix Felici. And honestly, I've been thinking that, my goodness, what is the hype? Sorry, it fell down. What's the hype with this Knitfix yarn? I mean, it can't possibly be that good. But I'm, I haven't even started knitting on it yet and I'm just so thrilled with it. It's so much fun and it's so soft. Okay, so the first one, so this is Knitpix Felici and the first one is called Spaceman. And here it is. It's this really um, neutral palette, uh, yeah, and it's 7525 Merino, if you haven't used it before. It's um, it's so soft. I mean, it's just, it's amazingly soft. It's like, it's like the buds on a pussy willow tree, <laughs> which is basically the softest thing that I can think of. And I totally collected them when I was a kid. Oh, like you do. <laughs> Anyways, I love it. I really love it and I can't wait to use it. I think that these might be some socks for the boyfriend because he likes really neutral colours. And the other one is a little bit wilder and it is called Hawaiian Shirt. There it is. It's this bright blue and yellow and cerulean and white and what is that colour? I don't know what that colour is, sort of a greenish grey. Um, but it is just so much fun and oh, it's going to be so fun to work with them and I'm so excited. Um, what else can I say? I think I will probably just do some vanilla socks out of this one because it's obviously self-striping and that's already really fun to, to knit and uh, it doesn't really need any more interest than that. And also um, these intense self-striping colours might look a little bit too busy with any sort of pattern. Um, yes, they also have quite a good yardage on them. Um, it's 50 grams and that's 218 yards. And that's pretty good for a 50 gram skein. Um, so this is one ball is definitely enough for a pair of socks for me because I do like my shocks my shocks <laughs> my my I do like my shocks small um I like my socks to be short and also like I said my feet aren't that big so I don't 
uh, 48 stitch count on a 2 or 2.5 needle is um, more than enough for me. And um, the boyfriend does not have small feet, but he also prefers uh, the shorter socks. So, um, yes, I might get a pair for him out of the single skein as well. Um, I guess I'll have to do this one first and see how much I have left and then I can decide if one one ball is enough for him or not. All right, that's that. Um, the next yarn I want to show you is uh, a gobstopper that is glorious. Um, I got it from comic book store Yarns uh, and the dyer is Evie uh, from Hungary and it's right here. Look at this, you guys. Look. It's just incredible. I love these colors. Um, it's green and purple and lilac. And it's just, it's so beautiful. And I love it. And it came in a, a what was originally a Halloween set. But I just recently got it. Uh, so it's this is the main color and it's called until dawn and there's an 80 gram bowl here and the contrasting sorry the contrasting mini skein is a 20 gram um 20 gram of this incredible berry color is called blackwood so this will obviously be the most epic pair of socks that i have ever knit probably uh, but for now, it's just lying on my living room table and uh, working as an art installment, really. And people have tried to clean it and take it away. I have very clearly stated that it is not to be touched. It is an art installment. So that's, that's that. Go over and check out her shop. It's Comic Book Store Yarns on Etsy. I will link to it in the show notes, which you will be able to find in the Ravelry group. And I did ask Evie when her next shop update would be, and she said that uh, she was planning one in probably a couple of weeks, and that is, um, yeah, so I'm not quite sure when, but do stop by and uh, follow her, and you'll be able to see when she has a new update. And she actually sent a little extra mini with the order. Um, it's this one. And uh, it's called Pink Danger. There you have it. And I was so excited because I don't really have a lot of mini skeins. And um, uh, also, <laughs> look how beautiful this color is. And it's called Pink Danger, which I thought just thought it was brilliant so yes that's that now the next skein this probably won't come as a shock to anyone because this is one of my absolute favorite shops and it is of course Bird Street UK uh, which is owned by Mrs and Mr B and Mr B is the yarn dyer and Miss is Mrs. B, Claire. Uh, she makes beautiful project bags and uh, together they have the Etsy shop Bird Street UK. And first of all, their yarn is spectacular. I love it. I absolutely love it. There's not a single skein in their shop that I don't absolutely want and um, feel like it's calling my name. Uh, but the other thing that I really love about their store is that they have the most brilliant names on their yarns and just epic cultural references and uh, that really speaks to my heart and um, they have not failed um, this time either. This is the skein, first of all. It's this incredible green um, it's this variegated green and it's got some bright fuchsia speckles and pops in it and <laughs> wait for it the colorway name 
is back to the fuchsia. Back to the fuchsia, you guys. Look. Isn't that just brilliant? Oh, I thought that was just so clever and amazing. And I love this so much. Um, I can't wait to use it. Uh, it's, it's just it's just amazing. I love the greens. I love the fuchsia. I love the name. I love the yarn. It's so soft and squishy and lovely. Um, it's 7525 Superwatch Marina Nylon. It's 100 gram skein, which is 425 meters. And if you haven't already familiarized yourself with their shop, make sure you go over there and check them out and show them some support. And uh, yes. Don't get all the yarn though, because then I won't be able to get any. But get most of it, okay? Well, not most of it. Get get a lot, but save some for me, okay? Okay. Well, we'll be all right. <laughs> all right. You know what? I think that that's actually everything I had to talk about this week. Um, there isn't really much going on. Um, I've been working a lot. I've been doing night shifts, um, which basically flips your whole rhythm and and everything upside down so um i'm a little yeah a little sleepy all the time pretty much and uh, um next week though i actually have the entire week up so hopefully i will be able to do some knitting and some other fun stuff um i have a dentist appointment on tuesday which i'm sort of dreading dreading sorry um, and that's basically why I have the week off next week um, because last time I did the first part of this procedure I got incredibly unwell and I was in a lot of pain and I had a uh, an inflammation in my jaw uh, which was very very unpleasant um, and because I was in so much pain after the first first part of the procedure I'm going in for my second the second part this week and I'm just hoping that it will be all right and um, if not at least I don't have to worry about um, not being able to go to work because I really hate that um, and so I'm, I'm pretty much I have the week off until the weekend um, and I do I do blah, I'm getting all tongue-tied here. Let's have a sip of tea again, shall we? <laughs> Blah. Anyways. Oh, that's, that turned cold. I would say it turned cold quickly, but I've been talking for 40 minutes, so it's not really that quickly. Um, anyways, yes, I'm working next weekend, but I have the week off until then, so that will be good. I'll do some, um, some knitting and also, you guys, my pattern that I have been talking a little bit about in the past is finished, and um, I'm I just I can't believe it's done. I've been working so much on it for such a long time, and it just it feels so weird to have it finished. But it is it's finished, and I'm excited and happy about it, and. Um, I'm going to do a call out for test knitters probably this week. Um, so do head on over to Ravelry. I will uh, put it in a thread there and join the group at Solid Blues Knits. And I will announce it on Instagram as well. It's um, going to be in English. So I will need some test knitters that are proficient in uh, uh, knitting in English. <laughs> and also it's a sock pattern and it's got a bit of lace work on there so make sure you you stop on by if that's something that you would be interested in in doing if um if you have the time um yes so that's uh, probably it make sure you um have a good week get some rest take care of yourself take time to knit and um Yes, be good, be good to yourself and to everyone else. And yes, that's it. I'm starting to ramble. Okay, if you uh, had fun like I did talking about these things, please 
feel free to mm, hit that subscribe button and uh, hit the little bell to get notifications when the next episode is up and feel free to get in touch if you have any questions or anything like that and thank you for spending your time with me have a good week bye